Melbourne University of Technology. Part of the reason that I got into astronomy was because people have this innate interest in what they see in the night sky. You go out, you look up, you see the stars and planets, and you, you kind of naturally wonder what they are. And people have wondered this for, for thousands of years. You know, all of the work that we do, in some ways, could be looked at as art. It's just, you know, something that people are curious about, interested in, and they're willing to pay money to, to have the research done that produces the astronomy. As an astronomer, I work in extragalactic astronomy. I look specifically at, at spiral galaxies like the Milky Way. Especially since we live in one of these things, the question is, well, how do they, how do they form? Where do they come from? How do they, how do they evolve? I use something called an integral field spectrograph. It's like a camera where each pixel of the camera actually takes a full spectrum of all of the light that's hitting that pixel. So we can measure the velocity of the galaxy in each little specter in, the, in the, the image, then we can tell whether it looks like a disk or not. I tend to think of, of what I do as basically a desk job with an awful lot of travel involved. Later this week, I'm going to, to Pasadena in California to to, to a meeting specifically to work on understanding how to analyze the data that we're getting from the Keck telescope. The Keck is one of the world's largest optical telescopes. The, the, it's two telescopes actually. They're both built on the summit of Mauna Kea in Hawaii. It's quite special to be here at Swinburne because we're the only Australian university to have access to those telescopes and we have about 20 nights a year which is a pretty significant um, level of, of access for the research that we do. Astronomy is quite a small community and so everybody knows everybody and it's really, really meant a lot that the, the community here at Swinburne is growing so quickly and it's, it's full of kind of vibrant, energetic young individuals. So I go to conferences or whatnot and people say, oh, you're from Swinburne. And so it's, it's really changed a lot even in the past few years just how much the growth of the center and has, has really put Swinburne on the map in terms of astronomy. I did my undergraduate at Caltech, and while I was there, I worked with uh, Richard Ellis to do a, a thesis, a, an honors type thesis there. And when I finished, I wanted to take a year off. I went to New Zealand, and while I was there, I was kind of looking for you know where I wanted to go. And I got this email from Richard saying, "Oh, Carl's here in Australia, and he's looking for PhD students, and you might be interested." And I emailed Carl, and he said, "Why don't you come visit?" And I came and visited, and. Here I am. Carl's a really good supervisor because, especially for me, he's very hands-off. So he, he lets me go and do the things that I want to do. I also, when I have a question or when I don't know where to go or what direction to take, he's really good because I can go to him and he's got you know, really fantastic ideas on, on what to try next. Being an international student, Melbourne is, is really quite an amazing place. It's, it's such a good place to live and, and you know, we joke about the fact that we're the, the, the most livable city in the world. There's so much to do outside that I really enjoy. There's, there's climbing and there's mountain biking and there's, there's all of these, these outdoor activities that I really enjoy in there. And also, you know, you get away from Melbourne. Melbourne is a big city, but you get away from the city and it's really dark and you can see the sky and you can take people out observing and, and really kind of show them some of what I, what I do and what I'm connected with. Swinburne University of Technology.